So, we ask the question, what's a community? And we had some great answers, didn't we? And the church is a community and places where we go to work and places where we live and our family and college, university, school, things we belong to are all different communities. And if we're going to try and build a community, we need to understand what communities are. Now if you look in the, um, the dictionary, a community is something, usually in a location, where people associate with each other, where they have something in common. All of which is true, but doesn't really give much of an indication of what a Christian community should be. Now the two readings we had today, the first one was about the first covenant that God made with Abraham. In fact he changed his name from Abram to Abraham and promised that he would be the father of many nations and then went on to describe in rather graphic detail uh, what the covenant meant for them to be associated because there were things they had to do to be in that community. And in the Old Testament, a lot about being part of the covenant community was about what you did and how you were. And it was about those physical signs as well. You had to be physically marked to be part of the community. And there were lots of rules and regulations you had to obey to stay part of the community. And that covenant was only with the people of Israel. So that community was quite exclusive on race lines and on religious lines. You were either in or you were out. Okay? Now when Jesus came along, he started to talk about community in a different way. And we can remember in the writings of Paul as well, the problems he wrote about with those who were trying to make new converts to Christianity be circumcised first so that they could be Jews first. And he went into great length saying how wrong that was. Because the circumcision we have as Christians isn't a physical one. It's one of our hearts. Our hearts change. And we also remember that all the things Jesus said and did weren't exclusive, were they? The Jews hated the Samaritans. And yet Jesus told the parable about the good Samaritan. They hated sinners. Sinners were excluded from the community. But Jesus went out of his way to befriend sinners and say that the kingdom of God was actually just as much for them as for the Jews. So every time Jesus talked about community, it was slightly different to what the Old Testament said about community. Because it was more inclusive. It wasn't based on race lines, it wasn't even based on religious lines in the sense of obeying rules. It was about a relationship. And as Brian said, it's about a relationship based on that table. We are all related one to another as Christians because we all eat of one bread and drink from one cup. Now it might be separately a physical Roll, and it might be grape juice rather than wine, and it might come out of little plastic cups rather than one cup. But the principle is there. We share the same loaf. We share the same cup. That loaf that represents Jesus' body that was given for all of us. That cup which represents Jesus' blood that was shed for all of us. And remember what it says in the communion? That that is the cup of the new covenant. So that is the new covenant that we all share in. But there are some things in life that we join that we just associate with, don't we? 
You're part of a community because you live in a street. You may not actually do anything in that community, but you live there, so you're part of it. The words that are used in the New Testament are a little bit more active than just associating with. One of the words is koinonia, which means fellowship, which is what Joe was talking about. And that means far more than just associating. It means partaking in something with someone. So as part of a Christian church, we're taking part in something with other people. So we can't just be part of a church because we happen to come in through the doors and sit at the back. We've got to actively be part of that community. And the first step in that is the fact that we share communion with each other. Community is all about sharing and partaking. And in a Christian community, it's not about taking, it's about receiving and giving. If you think about it, the only reason we're here is because of God's grace. We have no right to be part of his church. He's given us that right. We can't come along and say, I'm so good, I should be part of this church. Because we know that's not true, don't we? We're here because of what Jesus did for us. And he did that for every single one of us. So we're all on the same playing field. No one is a first class Christian and no one is a second class Christian. Whether you're a Lord or someone who cleans the streets, doesn't matter. We're all the same to God. And that's the first step we need to think about in becoming a Christian community. If we're going to become a Christian community in our wider community, the first thing we have to realise is the fact that we're here through grace. And that other people out there are no different to us. And they deserve to be in here just as much or as little, depending on which way you look at it, as we do. So a church can't be exclusive like in Old Testament times. We can't mark ourselves out and say we're Christians and you're not. Therefore we're welcome in here and you're not. We've got to remember what Jesus did. He made the church for everyone. It's often said that the church is the only organisation that's run for the benefit of its non-members. And if you think about it, it's true. When a church is working really well, what are all the members doing? They're doing things for people who aren't necessarily in the church. They're doing things for people outside the church as well. Most organisations and clubs and societies, if you think about it, run for the benefit of themselves, don't they? If you're a member of the club, it will do things for you. If you're not a member of the club, it won't. But a good church not only looks after its members, it welcomes and looks after those people who are outside it. So that's the first thing we need to realise in building a Christian community. is the fact that our community has to be outward looking. It has to be outward looking because if it hadn't been originally, if Jesus hadn't done what he did for us, we wouldn't be here. And so we've got to share that with others. Now what that means in practice is what we've got to think through and reflect on over the next few weeks. But that's the starting point. It's the fact that a Christian community must never be exclusive. It must be there for those who are outside. And we have to decide as a church here and now, what that means in practice. And that's exciting, and that's what we're trying to do. Let's just pray. Lord, thank you for the fact that you welcomed us 
into your community. Not because of who we are or what we've done, but because you loved us and sacrificed yourself for us. Help us to build a community in that same vein where we welcome others in the way that you welcomed us. In the name of Jesus. Amen.